Check out CSGORaffle.com for easy skins. Hello and welcome to the ultimate aim guide. Now, my goal with this video is to provide you with the most well-rounded and informational aim guide video ever made in CSGO. I am hoping that this will be a video that can be revisited multiple times a year by the same player and either be a good reminder or a continuing source of inspiration. There are annotations on this screen so you can skip parts or jump to specific parts as well as timestamps for the different subtopics in the description. This took a ton of work so I'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe should you feel I deserve it. All that's left to say now is enjoy and thanks for watching. Hello guys and welcome back into the first segment of the actual ultimate aim guide. Now first of all I want to just quickly explain what I mean by the ultimate aim guide and the reason I've decided to make this is because lately I've been exploring different, way, different ways to actually practice uh, just raw aim and it's helped me massively and I'm hoping that it can also help you guys massively so that's what we're going to try to do here. Now the reason why I call it the ultimate aim guide is because I'm going to be trying something that I don't see in many aim tutorials and it is that I will be trying to tell you about the different viable uh, shooting techniques. I will then tell you how to improve them and then I will also tell you in what situations they are the most useful. So for noobs or new players it is very nice to get the proper terms down so you sound like someone who has actually played the game for a while. At the same time you can learn how to improve this if you need improvement which everybody does. And then I can also tell you in what situations these are the most useful if you are kind of wondering. So, um, if you've just seen the rundown, which I hope most of you have, what you may have noticed is that I've kept burst firing out of this guide. I don't find it to be a viable strategy in the current meta. Not in CSGO at least. And that is why I've actually just decided to totally neglect that burst firing is uh, a thing. I'm not really doing that right now, I know, but... Um, it's just, it might work a bit with the M4, but I feel like there are def uh, definitely better ways to actually uh, play the game than burst firing. But I see a lot of aim guides where people say, hey, you should burst fire. And I think that's a big mistake. I do not at all burst fire, ever, ever, ever. Um, and I feel like uh, it's going well enough for me. But first of all, we're going to be talking about tap firing. And it's called tap firing because the technique itself is just you tapping like this. I want to share a quick story here. Um, it's something that happened at the ESL1 Cologne uh, 2015 after party where I uh, met the mouse sports player Chris J. Or maybe uh, not so much met him. Well, at least I went and introduced myself and I asked him, um, I feel like I can't get better aiming wise. Is there any way you can help me? Now what he told me is that he basically never plays deathmatch. He only plays bot practice maps. And um, this was kind of something new to me. I had always, we're talking six months ago, I would only play deathmatch. I would never play harmless bots. And the reason being that I thought that deathmatch would put you in realistic, intense one versus one situations, whereas harmless bots, they can't hurt you. You could simply stand still and you could just click away. Is that really what you want? Would you want a realistic setting where you can practice all uh, parts of the game, movement and aiming and different shooting techniques, you know, you kind of are forced to practice them all at once or do you want to focus on one thing at a time? Now, after having tried but practicing for a while, I feel my aim has just improved massively and that is why I'm making this video. So, first of all, talking about tap firing. Tap firing, as I just told, is just tapping at a wall and the way that I would like you guys to uh, practice this, or at least the way that I do this, is that I do not go for flick shots. It's something that we're going to be covering later. A flick shot is basically when you have your cursor away from a player and you flick onto him, and I can't even hit, but you flick onto his head or his body and you actually do get the hit like that. That is not what we want to be practicing when practicing tap firing. What we want to be practicing though is we want intense aim prank, as I feel this is the best way to improve. Aim prank, short for aim practice if you didn't know. So we want to just turn, shoot this guy, turn, shoot this guy, and go around like this. And kind of, if you can, you don't constantly need to be moving, but if you can move in between shots or um, 
at least move as you go along here so you don't just stand in the middle and just turn around. I think that will help you massively, but for new players, it might, this might be uh, a bit hard. But as you can see, I'm kind of moving my mouse, locking onto the head, then shooting, not flick shooting. So this is very important. This way you can improve tap firing. You can kind of... It's kind of flick shotting in a sense, but then locking on, then tracking your opponents. And it is very useful, especially um, for pistols, uh, Deagle, for example, where you don't have many shots. It's nice that you can make your shots count. And this is essentially what you're doing with tap firing. You're placing your cursor quickly on your aim, uh, on your enemy, and then you shoot. So with a Deagle, this is kind of key because this is how a deagle should be used you can only fire so many bullets especially at long range before you are totally screwed up by the recoil so um practicing tap firing is also a very good way to actually practice the deagle especially if you're doing the uh, it very intensely uh practicing desert eagle in this map is not a good idea in my opinion as some of them are at such a long range that even if you actually aim at the head it won't always land, and it's kind of... Okay, now all of my shots are landing, but you get the idea. Um, you would have to be crouching for you to actually be accurate with an eagle. And I think that it's much better to just tap fire with an AK and practice like this, as it's essentially the same aiming that you're going to be doing, um, just with a different gun. So, it's not only good for the eagle, it's all in all good for pistols, because it kind of teaches you to have rapid aim onto your opponents and then tracking them and it's very very key it kind of combines both flick shotting and uh, the tracking movement two key shooting techniques in my opinion um, this means that in pistol rounds where pistols are super accurate uh, well most people know that pistols are, pistols are super accurate your opponents won't have head armor and if you can quickly move your aim onto your opponent's head then you should be pretty good to go. So it's a very good way of practicing just tap firing, as it is tap firing, but at the same time, it really rewards you in pistol rounds and on uh, force buys, or just if you want to play a Deagle, you know, it can happen. Uh, Deagle is definitely a viable buy at this current time in the meta. Now, what I would like you guys to do is that you move to the right like this, Go around and shoot every single bot here on the map called Aim Bots. If you didn't know, I'll leave a link in the description. When you feel that you've killed all of the bots, there aren't that many. It's like ten. I want you to go and drag left instead. So you practice dragging both ways as you run around this uh, small arena. This way, you don't just favor one way. You actually get the movement in from both sides. So that if you have to, all of a sudden, really quickly move to the left, well. You've learned how to do that, and the same with right, so you don't favor one side because you don't want to, you don't want to be good at just <laughs> aiming to the right and not to the left. That doesn't make any sense. So just change it up, boys. Okay. Then um, this is kind of a movement technique, and I put it as a side factor, but I feel it's very. Uh, I mean, movement is very, very key in tap firing, and the reason for that is that tap firing is something where you can really move in between shots. Spraying, for example, you kind of have to stay stationary to get a decent spray in, but tap firing you can easily move like this. Um, and this is a technique called stutter stepping. This is something that you need to practice, and it's something that most good players uh, maybe not have mastered, but at least get quite good at. It is quite surprising, but if you move like this, at some point your velocity will become zero, and if you shoot at the exact point that your velocity is zero, your accuracy will be perfect, or at least as good as if you were standing still with zero velocity. So you can actually start a step like this, and if you time it right, you can get all of your shots on point while still moving, uh, if you can actually hit your opponents. But it's a very good technique to move in between shots, and this is also why a player like Scream is so good at... Um, at what he does, or have been so good at what he does, because tap firing, you really need good movement, and Scream is just so good at using his movement to constantly uh, evade shots and uh, so on and so forth. Now, before we end off tap firing as a topic, I want to just quickly talk to you about the situations that this style is the most useful. And most of you have probably already guessed it. Um, the situations that it is the most useful is at range, where Spraying is maybe not that viable, as it is very hard to have a tight spray pattern. 
uh, or yeah, tight spray pattern at range. Whereas tap firing, you're only shooting one bullet, then you can move, and then you can shoot another bullet, and constantly do this, and you can get a lot of accurate shots in very quickly, but at the same time you can move in between shots so that you are harder to hit, which at range can be a very, very big thing. But at the same time, um, you can adjust your shots really quickly. It's it's a lot harder to spray on one guy and then having to adjust to the next. With tap firing, you can shoot one guy and then adjust to the next. And um, at range, or if you're fighting multiple opponents at once, this is very, very good. You're availing shots, you're hitting shots in quick succession, you can quickly adjust your shots if another player pops up. And yeah, I mean, this is just uh, very good for fighting multiple opponents or fighting people at long range, as you want your shots to be the most accurate at long range, because um, the models that you're going to be trying to hit are going to be smaller. So this was the first part of the aim prac guide. It is a bit of a long guide, I know, but it is the ultimate aim guide, and I'm just talking about everything that I feel is necessary for you to master these aspects. Okay, that was a lot of information crammed into such a short amount of time. Um, I hope some of it sticks. It might take a bit of time for you to process, but uh, at the same time, you know, maybe I just can give you some ideas, and the symbiosis of my thoughts and your thoughts will make your thoughts better. That's what I'm hoping. That's the mission, okay? Now, I'm going to be talking about spraying, and it should be the most simple and easy thing to talk about, as most people probably already know what spraying is, and yet it's just, I'm struggling so much. This is take 22 or some shit. It's crazy. Now, spraying down to its core is just you shooting multiple bullets without releasing the fire button. So it could be shooting at this wall, for example. Now, um, most of my fan base is probably guys, and it goes without saying that, um, well, it should go without saying that uh, the tighter, the better. So, this re applies to a lot of things in life, and the tighter the spray pattern, the better. Someone who masters spraying has, yeah, bullets all landing on top of each other. Now, no one obviously masters spraying to this level, but it is what you're going to be trying to do. So what I will advise you to is spraying at a wall. It could be on Dust 2, it could be on any map really. You just don't want to be too far away from the wall. And what you need to bear in mind is that spray patterns do not change. There will also uh, well, there will always be a bit of inaccuracy connected to your shots, but the spray patterns themselves are not randomized. So by spraying at a wall, you can find out exactly how you need to counter whichever weapon you are currently holding. This means that if you want to practice the spray pattern for an AK or practice how to counter it, you should go and spray at a wall with the AK. The same goes for the M4, the Farmers, the Galil, whichever guns you might want to practice spraying with. Now, I want to quickly mention that there's another map called Recoil Master Map. Well, it's just called Recoil Master, I believe. Uh, I myself have not tried it. The idea of it doesn't really make much sense in my head. But um, at the same time, I feel that a lot of people are really liking this map, and you might as well go try it. I will probably go try it at some point as well. Um, I'm just giving you guys other options as... It, I mean, maybe you don't want to practice on this aimbots map, and that is totally fine. I'm just giving you other alternatives. Now, how I like to practice on aimbots is that I simply have harmless bots standing still, and I spray at chest level and just try to keep it there. Try to kill them in the least amount of bullets possible and as quickly as possible. And then I just go from one player to the next and constantly do this. Now, you want to be doing this with different guns. And for example, me, I have recently picked up the M4A4 instead of the M4A1S. And that means that I have to practice a new spray pattern. The reason I picked up the M4A4 is because of the uh, recent changes to the M4A1S. But I obviously want to be practicing the spray pattern for the M4A4 as well. And uh, you want to be going through all of the guns that you feel the need to actually practice spray pattern for. Personally, I only practice the AK and the M4A4, but you could also practice Famas and Galil. And after making this video, or just even this segment, I probably will go and practice these spray patterns, as I think that they are good to know. You might not want to, like, well, you don't necessarily have to master the Famas and, and the Galil. 
But these are definitely two guns that you will be picking up in a competitive setting, um, no matter like if you want it or not. Um, is what I'm trying to say. Now, one thing I like to do as well is that if you've got two bots spawning close to each other on the map, or bots where one is far away and one is a bit closer, for example here, I will go for a spray on one and then I will transfer it to the other player. This is called spray transfer and it is yeah, pretty much uh, that easy to explain. You want to spray on one guy and you want to transfer it to the other guy. This uh, kind of improves you... Oh uh, well. It's kind of enabling you to quickly swat down eco incoming terrorists, for example, where eco refers to uh, an economy round where the opposing side doesn't have very many, uh, well, very much money, and they don't have good gear either. So they most likely will be without armor and will therefore be taking more damage per shot. And if you ever face someone who doesn't have armor, spraying is probably the best idea. Uh, Partly because it kills them really quickly, and also partly because there's something called aim punching that occurs, especially when you're facing someone who does not have uh, armor. But I'm not going to go into depth with aim punch, it's uh, not that important for this video. Spray transfers enables you to go from one player to the other um, in a single spray, and this means that you can kill multiple opponents really quickly if you actually can master this. Now. I think it's a good idea if you actually practice spray transfers, but getting the spray pattern down is the most important thing from the start. Spray transfers is really only something you should do if you play, you know, versus proper teams and against good opponents, because what will most likely happen at a lower level is that people will be going in one by one, and you won't really be doing much uh, spray transferring. So if you are a lower skill player, maybe just work on practicing the spray pattern, and then later go and practice spray transfers as well, but a good uh, situation could be like this, kill this guy and then kill this guy. It could also be multiple people, it could be three, like this. Um, it obviously gets harder the more people that you try to kill in, uh, you know, succession here. So, what I want to talk about quickly here is that it's something that I feel is a big mistake in a lot of aim tutorials out there. It is the fact that people say that if you want to get better spray control, you need to memorize the spray pattern. I did tell you to go and look at a wall and try to counter it on that same wall, but I do not I like I do not want you guys to memorize the spray patterns because I'm afraid that lesser skill players or even players in general will be trying to counter spray patterns in their mind while they are battling some guy. And that is not where your focus should be. It should be instinct, it should be muscle memory that makes your spray good when you are battling a guy. You shouldn't be sitting X minus C equals uh, Y or some shit in your head as you're spraying on some guy. You want it to be instinct, you want your muscles to memorize this. If you do not know what muscle memory means, you can uh, probably find some fancy pantsy site that can tell you in depth and all that. I'm not an expert on this topic. It is basically just the fact that repetition makes your muscles memorize uh, how far you need to move your mouse for it to move onto another, uh, you know, place in your point of view. I guess you can say. And this is all about repetition, really, which is why I think it's a good idea to spray and run around like this. You can obviously pick up the pace constantly. Uh, you just need to bear in mind that if you do it too quickly, then your spray will not reset and you cannot hit. So you want to. Pick up a good pace. Lesser skill players will probably not be able to do it this quickly, but just get a decent pace in and uh, you should quickly learn how to get better spray control. Now, this map is super cool because you can make them run in random patterns, but you can go speed 2, 80, 80, and um, this will make them run from side to side. This can make it harder to spray as you're spraying moving targets and one thing you need to bear in mind is that these bots, they are not subject to the tagging. So when you shoot them, they do not get tagged, they do not get slowed. Meaning that if you were to actually shoot a guy that um, would be running around like in an actual game, he would be tagged and will be getting easier for you to actually hit them. Um, these guys are doing my head in though, so I think I'll just uh, make them stop running. But um, 
You can do this to practice uh, spraying on moving targets, and it is actually very effective. It's something that I have also practiced. But on the topic of ADAD and tagging, I just quickly want to tell you, and I keep saying quickly, but this might not be very quick, but this is this one thing that I want you guys to memorize that I have said from this entire guide. It is what comes next in these couple of minutes. Back in 2014 or 2013, I could not find the actual patch notes, so I'm not quite sure. But in, in either 2014 or 2013, there was a nerf to ADAD movement, and nerf meaning, um, you know, it got worse, and there was uh, added tag into the game. ADAD movement is something that refers to when you move from side to side. So. You use A to run left and D to run right. So that's ADAD movement. It's kind of the stutter stepping that I talked about. And tagging is when you get shot and you then get slowed. These two things were added at the same time. So, first of all, if you were moving, you now, well, it now takes longer for you to stop after moving. And at the same time, you accelerate slower than before meaning that the movement is worsened. At least if you're doing stutter stepping like this or ADAD movement, yeah? At the same time, if you are moving and you get hit, you get slowed, okay? These two things on top of each other in one update is crazy and just completely changed the game. So far, Nothing has been changed to these variables, as far as I know. I think Tagging might have had a slight change in terms of how it works with which gun you've got in your hands. But as far as ADA movement goes, nothing has been changed. And these two things uh, working together, like these two things combined, just make spraying fucking overpowered. And this is what I want you guys to memorize. This is the most overpowered thing that the pro players do not talk about. At least in my opinion. Spraying is fucking overpowered. Imagine you tap firing. You run around here, you're missing, so you're not tagging this guy. He's not getting slowed. He can move freely because with tap firing, you want to go for a headshot. If you do not manage to hit the headshot, he can move freely. At the same time, you are now slower than that op update way back in time. This means that tap firing got worse just there. If he sprays, and hits you once, you cannot move freely. If you hit, if he hits you twice, you're gonna get even more trapped in the mighty grasp of spraying here. And that means that if you, with a spray, can hit the first bullet, you can pretty much make people not move and makes it 10 times easier to actually hit your sprays, meaning that this is fucking overpowered. If you can learn how to spray at ranges, like, let's say this, is a pretty long range, you can still pretty quickly kill a guy even with body shots. And this is why it is so fucking overpowered. I've talked about this in my thoughts about movement video, and I still cannot really fathom how pro players are not making a big deal out of this because the player with the best spray control is the best aimer in current CSGO meta. And that is also why a player like Scream went from being one of the best players in the world to being just another top player. He is getting up there again, but if you look at his playstyle now and compare it to back in the day before these updates, his playstyle is totally different and now he sprays, which is good for him and it's nice and he's getting better and it's enjoyable to watch and all and he still does tap firing, but it's not any way, n well, anywhere near as good as it was before. Spraying is fucking OP. So, in the current meta, spraying is really overpowered, the most viable shooting strategy. If there is one thing that you should be improving the most, it should be spray control. If you manage to actually pull off good sprays, you can take over the world, baby. I believe. Hashtag. Before I end off this segment, I just quickly want to say that I can only speak of the current meta. I cannot tell you if you're watching this video a year from now, the meta will still be the same. Who knows? A week from now, maybe spraying is revamped and is utter shit. I cannot tell you that. So you need to be doing this research on your own if you're watching this video a year from now. But at least uh, in the current meta, October 2015, this is fucking overpowered. I promise you guys that I will tell you in which situations it is the most useful. The most, uh, well, the best uses for the spray is one versus one situations where you can, you know, stay stationary and actually shoot some guy. 
you can do this at pretty much any ranges, and I'll show you. Um, I'm no expert at spray control. I even just started practicing spray control without mouse acceleration like one or two weeks ago. This guy is quite hard to see. It's quite hard to even make his head out. And yet, with a bit of luck, you can actually quickly kill this guy. And at just a bit shorter range, you can kill players so quickly. These guys even have cover for half of their body. It is crazy how overpowered spraying is at the current uh, point in time. Um, but yeah. This is the second segment. Hope to see you in the third, boys. Thank you for watching. Hello and welcome to this third segment of the Ultimate Aim Guide video. Now, this part is going to be about flick shotting, also known as drag shooting. Um, a few people call it flick shotting, a few people call it drag sh you know, like... People would say, oh, I just hit a nasty flick. Or people would say, I just hit a nasty drag, for example. That, that would be a way to use it. So I'm just telling you this to kind of help you get down the proper terms if you don't know them already. Now, about this, uh, I want to start out by saying that flick shotting, in like down to the fucking core here, it is not so much a shooting technique in itself, like tap firing, you know, it's a technique on how to pace your shots so that you land more bullets. Or spraying is a technique where you hold down mouse 1 and you try to get the tightest spray pattern. That is not how flick shotting works. But what flick shotting is, is that it's a tool that helps you in every single shooting technique. And that is why, you know, it's kind of to raise importance to this kind of sometimes, um, you know, hidden variable in how good a player's aim is. So, first of all, I want to say that this is key for Opus. And the reason being that... Instead of trying to drag a guy without having your scope out, what you could be doing instead is you could just be seeing this guy, you could scope up and then try to flick shot him. And it is a very viable technique. Now, flick shotting is something that I touched briefly in my tap firing segment. And what it essentially is, is that you're aiming at a place that's not on your opponent and you kind of try to hit him while you're still moving the mouse, okay? So, what you ideally want to be doing is that you want to be here for example drag it and stop at this guy but what some people also do um especially you know low tier players is that they will maybe try to hit a flick this is something that i did back in the days where you know you keep going and you maybe stop over here because your aim is pretty atrocious but if you can get the timing down to when you hit the guy then you're still going to hit your flick shot okay so ideally what you want to be doing with your flick shots is that you want to be Trying to hit your opponent and stopping here. Because if you stop, then you've got a chance at another shot. With an orb, that is not really the case. But as I'm going to be showing you, this is uh, also very uh, vital in the shooting technique that is tap firing. Because what I talked about is that I wouldn't go around tap firing and try to hit flick shots. So you don't want to be aiming here and then try to flick onto his head. What you want to be doing, what you want to be doing is that you want to be aiming at a place that's not where he is. Use your point and click aim, so just move your cursor onto his head quickly and then shoot. Where flick shotting is kind of, you're still dur uh, during the motion of moving your mouse. And tap firing, at least in the way that I would like to practice it with you guys, is that I will be moving my aim onto my opponent and then shooting. Okay, So flick shotting is kind of where you're still in motion and tap firing is... In my opinion, at least the proper way to practice tap firing is by going onto their heads and then stopping and shooting. So, I feel like half of the tap firing shooting technique is down to your flick shotting abilities. So, if you're not good at flick shotting, well, how are you ever going to hit this tap fire? Because you're not going to even be stopping at his head and you're, you're not going to be actually hitting. It's kind of the same case with spraying. And spraying, I mean, the duels that you get into with spraying, it's usually a close quarters duel meaning that your opponent is going to be killing you quickly. So, especially if you're really up close with a spray, it usually isn't down to the guy with the spray, uh, best, or the, well, the tightest spray pattern. It is more down to the guy who hits the first shot. And this is even more the case when you're having two guys who battle each other without armor, but it's rather you've got a spraying weapon and neither of you have armor. So, um... What you want to be doing is that you want to be flicking onto your opponents and then spraying. So this could be, you know, at any range. It could be like this and then flicking over and spraying. Now, if you do not 
at least get good at flick shotting, well then, if you're up close, or if you have to land a spray on a guy quickly, well yeah, you might have good spray control, but if you can't actually find out where your opponent is, then your spray control is just going to be wasted, because you're going to be having a very tight spray pattern at a spot near your enemy, but that's not really going to help you at all. So, without good flick shotting abilities, every shooting technique gets worse. And this is something that people need to realize, because whenever I see these aim guides, I never hear people talk about flick shotting. It's kind of a hidden variable, in the sense that since it's not a shooting technique in itself, people just totally forget to think about it. But it is very important. And the way that I would go about um, practicing this is actually, this time, in a deathmatch setting, where I'd run around with an op, for example, which is how I usually do it, and just run around, and not really, you know, pre-aiming any positions, but if a guy pops up, then I scope in and I try to flick him, okay? So, this is a way to get really good at flick shotting, simply because uh, you're forcing yourself to hit a flick shot every single time an opponent pops up. You could do it with an AK as well. You could just go around, uh, let's grab an AK here, run around, not pre-aim any positions, if a guy pops up, you try to get a flick shot spray onto him, right? Now... I hope that you guys understand how important flick shotting actually is, but it is rarely talked about. Because the only times you ever hear about a flick shot is when somebody hits a nasty flick shot, you know? Where it's like they're so far from the opponent and then they just quickly drag onto him. But flick shotting is actually essential in every single shooting technique, and that is why it is so important that you guys start practicing this. Hello and welcome to the fourth segment of this Ultimate Aim Guide video. Now, what we're going to be covering is tracking movement. Now, look at these guys. They're all just so happy. It's so nice. Um, but uh, what tracking essentially is, is that if I'm standing and looking at this guy and he decides to move to the left, I want to be tracking his movement. So I don't want to be flick shotting over to him. I want to be actually tracking him as he goes along. The same thing if he goes to the right, I'm going to be trying to track him to the right. Okay, so what I want to be doing is I want to keep my crosser at his head or his body, for example, constantly throughout his movement. Okay, so one way to practice this could be doing speed one and the first ADAD pattern on the aimbots map. What this guy does is he just walks around in an ADAD pattern, and I can try to track him. Now, a lot of this will be me knowing the pattern, and not so much me actually becoming good at tracking his movement. But I think tracking is much easier if you're a high sensitivity player, like, not 20 sensitivity, let's fucking go to the moon. Um, but something like, you know, for example, I play uh, 0 0.9 on 800 DPI, and for a lot of people, that's a rather low sensitivity. So for me, I have to do a lot of moving with the mouse before I actually move it. Whereas I feel it's it's much easier to track if you've got a high sensitivity. That's just my opinion, though. And that is, uh, I mean, different people have different opinions. That is how the world works. But what I am going to be telling you is that if you get tired of this, what you could be doing is you could put uh, speed 2, where they're going to be running instead, which is going to be a bit harder. But if you feel really, really good at tracking, what you could be doing is you could pick a random pattern. And they're going to be moving totally at random, and it's going to be very, very hard. But this is not about you memorizing a, uh, an ADAD pattern, which, you know, people are not going to be running in that set ADAD pattern on the battlefield, okay? They're going to be running in a random pattern, at least, the, at least the good players will. So if you want to get good at tracking, what you should probably be doing is going speed one, and then tracking a random pattern, because this is much harder. There's no anticipation of him changing direction. He's just doing it at random, okay? Makes sense. But it's going to be very, very hard. So, once again, this is not a shooting technique in itself. It is a tool that you can utilize to better every single aspect of your aiming and shooting capabilities, okay? So, thinking about it, I've got some notes here on my second monitor, and it actually is the case that the only real shooting techniques that I've got and I've covered are tap firing and spraying. Now, I'm not going to be covering any kind of different ways to play the AWP. I could be doing this in a video if requested, um, the ultimate, you know, AWP aim guide or whatever, but I've just decided to pick a rifle aim. And uh, yeah, if requested, I could obviously do an AWP uh, guide as well. 
you know, only two shooting techniques have been covered in this ultimate aim guide that I, you know, I, I strive to make this the ultimate aim guide that people always think of when, um, when needing to get better aim or improve the aim or, you know, just revisit to become aware of these things that are very important that sometimes even the best players forget. So I have actually a very limited repertoire of shooting techniques that I use. I only use spraying and tap firing, whereas some people might use burst firing, which I don't really like, but that is totally okay. Now, we have a couple of tools that is that are going to help us uh, in this, and this is another one of them. But what is going to be the way that we're going to be practicing this is either here on aimbots, or you could be going onto a pistol deathmatch where it's headshot only. That makes it very hard because in pistol rounds, the, the players with good tracking abilities will be very successful since everybody's moving so fast and you only really have a few shots uh, that you can make count, you know. With spraying, it's also about tracking if your opponent moves, but it's also about knowing the spray pattern. With a pistol, it's pretty much tap firing and then just constantly tracking your opponent um, throughout his movement and trying to land shots consistently and it is very hard now you could either play pistol headshot only you could also just play regular pistol deathmatch or you could play normal deathmatch with pistols now it could be you know headshot only deathmatch you know regular headshot only deathmatch where you pick up a deagle or you pick up let's say a glock or p2000 or a usp since these do not kill in a single hit meaning that you will have to track your opponents as a single headshot is not enough, you're going to have to land two, and it's going to be putting you at a severe disadvantage, but if you manage to get good at tracking here, you will be able to hit multiple headshots right after each other, even with the small pistols, and they're also going to be the most accurate pistols, so you can definitely use your movement to actually try and uh, kill off your opponents. Now, I already kind of I, I kind of covered this already, but I wanted to talk about which situations it is the most useful in. And now, as this is a tool, there's no real situation where it's the most useful simply because it is useful in every single situation. But, as I said, pistol rounds are definitely a big one. And also on these force buy rounds where maybe you're playing a P250 or you're just playing no armor and a P250, I wouldn't so much go with the Tech 9, it can be a bit of a random weapon at times, and even if you are actually good at tracking your opponent, it's not going to help you massively. But if you're going to be playing a P250, which is a somewhat accurate weapon, or a Deagle, what you're going to be doing is that you're going to be hopefully tracking your opponent's movement. Say if you miss the first shot, or even hit the first shot, maybe in the head, well you're going to still, with a P250, probably land another shot and this could either be the body or it could be the head usually a body shot will kill him off if you've already dinked him and it's not too far of a range so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be trying to track his movement so that you can get a lot of shots off that are just hopefully going to be landing on the target it would kind of be the same as tap firing where you're moving which you kind of can do with pistols and constantly trying to track him um, while you're actually moving and this is also another way you could practice tracking I think a lot of lower skill players would not even be able to like move in random patterns and uh, track your opponents but it is very vital seeing as you know if you want to be able to move in between shots you're gonna be able to well you're gonna you're gonna have to have the ability to to you know even a stationary target just track his movement well it, you know he's not moving but he's moving relative to you because you are moving in a sense and you're gonna be trying to tr to track his head while you yourself uh, is moving in a bit of a random pattern. You can just press buttons at random. But um, I think this kind of covered, you know, what situations is the most useful in, how to practice it, and what tracking is. Now, as it is a tool, it's not something that I can go so much in depth with. Um, but it's it's nice for you to know how to practice and how it like what it is and when to use it, right? I've decided to add movement as a side factor to this guide. Without good movement, you won't be a good player. Here are three different movement-oriented game modes that I find to be very fun.
I also briefly touched the topic of muscle memory and how it is all about repetition. Practice, practice, practice. The best way to train muscle memory in my opinion is this man, training AMCSGO. 